What's going on everybody? Good afternoon, happy Friday. So today is January 3rd and we have a Freightliner, Cascadia, with a DD15 customer came in because he's got a couple fault codes. Now this is funny and interesting because I wanna show you guys what the difference is between a misfire because of the valves not being adjusted properly or out of adjustment or how to tell if you actually have a bad injector. So typically when you see this fault code, I'm gonna show you this code right now as it pops up. So this particular fault code is you're gonna see right now, idle smoothness control slash cylinder, cylinder number four quantity deficit at idle, SPN 1326 FMI 31. So what does that mean? What's it telling you? What's going on? So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna do a quick compression test and then I'm gonna show you guys what's going on and what i see okay so give me one second so the first thing i want to do is when you fire it up i'm gonna i'm gonna fire it up i want you to hear what it sounds like okay now it's gonna sound like an actual misfire chavo lo watch out okay okay so i'm gonna fire it up and i just want you to hear what this thing sounds like so you can identify or kind of get an idea of what's going on so hold on guys all right guys so we are back hopefully i didn't mess that up recording up but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up let me open up my screen really quick just to kind of get a visual on what's going on. And again, this is going to be in regards to an idle smoothness fault code. Sounds like a misfire. So a lot of guys may think, hey, this is an injector issue, uh, but it may not be. I'm going to show you guys what I find and what I think and my approach to that. So here goes. So two things are going to happen here. You can crank the engine over. You're going to hear it struggle to start, and it may feel like an actual misfire. So you can crank it, listen to it. You can also do a ISB test, you can do a cylinder cutout test, or a compression test. Now, compression test is probably the easiest way to go, so you're not possibly causing any damage to the truck or the engine itself. So try that first, and then go from there. Show you guys what I do. My little method of uh, of troubleshooting things. Same thing as always, guys. Actions tab. You're going to go to relative compression test. You're going to click on run test as soon as it allows you to. Make sure all the conditions are met, be safe. All right, we're gonna click on run test. I'm gonna click on yes, give me one second there. And then the last thing you're gonna do is crank the engine, but you do not let go until the truck stops doing its little test. So let's see here, how can I hold this in place so you guys can see what the hell's going on. That's gonna fall. Let's see here, guys. Bear with me, guys, bear with me. It's kind of shooting up at the sky, but you're, that's the best I can do right now. Here goes. Okay, guys, so I'm not sure if you actually heard that. Sorry, again, it's kind of pointing up at the sky. Once it stops cranking, let go of the key, and then you're going to see your results. So we have cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. Number five, I don't know, 104% interesting uh number four is going to be the big culprit because again that's the one that's showing us the fault code so we have two percent earlier i did the same test in front of the customer and it was down to zero percent so it's not going to be an injector okay in my opinion it's not so the easiest thing you can do so you're not wasting too much time and you're certainly not wasting money is you're going to go ahead and get all the shit out of the way okay you're going to go ahead and pop pop the hood we're gonna get all the accessories out of the way. We're gonna put the engine to time. And then we're gonna go ahead and check the valve. So, all right, here we go, guys. So that's what you're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take everything out of the way. Take the top air filter out. Again, be careful with those little stupid plastic lines back there. Those little coolant lines, where are you at? There you are, right there, right? You've got two of them. Be very careful with those. They're very brittle. They're plastic and they're garbage. It's a terrible design. Anyway, you're gonna get all that out of the way. And then first thing in the morning, once this thing's cool, I'm gonna go ahead and do a valve adjustment. <coughs> Excuse me. So do the valve adjustment. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a compression test again to make sure we're, that we're good. So number three is, I'm sorry. Number four is the one that was acting up. So hopefully we'll be able to figure it out and go from there. Okay go. guys, good morning, happy Saturday. So we are back, we're gonna finish up this valve adjustment that we talked about where it's either going to be a compression issue misfire injector something of that nature so right now we are tdc one here's one two and four is the culprit that we're talking about in the video 
Okay, so you're gonna see for yourself, I've got no left and right, I've got no up and down, this thing is tight as hell. So I'm gonna adjust everything all the way across the board uh, just to kind of show you guys what's going on. So again, if you're TDC1, you're gonna adjust intakes one, two, four. If you're TDC1, you're gonna do exhaust one, three, and five. But just to kind of give you a heads up, hopefully this makes a difference. Again, I'm gonna make the adjustments and I'm gonna put everything back together and we're gonna go ahead and, and retest our compression and hopefully that will resolve our issue. Guys, say good morning to Chavo. Happy New Year, Chavito. Feliz Año. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so let's make our adjustments. Let's get this going and get this guy back. Okay, on guys, so we are all done. Went ahead and make our, made our valve adjustments. A lot of them were out of adjustment. Number four was just definitely smashed in, which is definitely giving us that fault code, in my opinion. But I'm going to test and verify that. I've got everything put back together. Uh, engine brakes were out of adjustment, so we took care of that. And here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same compression test that we always do in our tests, in our videos. Uh, I, again, it's just, I know it's not 100%. I know it's not the end all be all. Some of you guys are like, oh, that doesn't prove anything. You're right, you know, but it's at least gives you a good sense of direction on where to go, okay? Last thing I want you to do is buy, you know, an $1,100 injector, $1,500 injector when you may not even need one. All right, guys, so I had, to, I had to interrupt that because I got a phone call and I had to take that call. So, all right, let's see what do we have going on here. We have, I'm gonna go back. Ah, what the hell's going on? Did everything just kind of go offline and reconnect? I have no idea. All right, let's find out. So I'm gonna go back to my faults. I wanna take a look at the fault codes, but it's still reading. So if you're looking at this yellow, at these yellow lights, that means it's connecting and it's doing everything it's supposed to do right now. So here's all the codes. I'm just gonna go ahead and run my test as soon as it lets me. I have no idea why this is taking longer to connect than usual. All right, here we go. So same thing as always, we're gonna go to our actions tab. We are gonna go to, after, I'm sorry, relative compression test. I'm gonna click on that. I am gonna go, let me back up the screen a little bit here, guys. I'm gonna go to my run test. I'm gonna click on yes. And then I gotta crank the key until it says stop or until it actually stops on its own. So I'm gonna leave the phone here. <coughs> Hi, about trouble. All right, guys, I'm gonna crank this thing over until the computer says otherwise. And here goes, ready? Just keep cranking guys, don't let go and don't stop until the computer stops. All right guys, let's see what it does. I'm going to show you guys in real time what the number is. Error. Ah, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna charge the batteries. I think these batteries are pretty weak sauce. So unfortunately, sucks balls today. Okay, guys, let me charge the batteries up. They did seem kind of weak. Uh, I did not stop that, but let me see. What's okay, guys, truck is running. Sounds a hell of a lot better. I am gonna do a compression test just to kind of go from there. The batteries are pretty low, so unfortunately, I think that's kind of what caused some of these issues right now for testing. So definitely, 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 I'm going to take the advice of one of the one of a, a comment that was on a previous video. Let me turn this shit off for a second. So on a previous video, somebody had commented about batteries being low, and I should have checked it because one of these was low. I mean, one of these was not connected properly. Actually, that terminal right there. Battery is definitely looking pretty weak sauce, if you ask me. When you start seeing it weeping, in my opinion, it could be just a battery that needs to get replaced. And let's kind of look at the date. You can see it there, July, 2023. So not terribly old, but uh, bad battery can definitely cause that. So uh, right now, what I'm gonna do is charge up the batteries a little bit. I wanna come back and do the compression test. Um, I just wanna show you guys, hey, where we're at that, where we're at with it. Uh, everything sounds really, really good, much better than when it came in. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have this idle smoothness control um, fault code come back anytime soon unless the valves are completely worn out and need to get rebuilt or you know new cylinder head and whatnot. So anyway, as of now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut this thing down for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and let the batteries charge, do their thing, come back. We're gonna do the same test again and we should be good to go. Okay guys, we are back. Batteries have been charging pretty good. Uh, definitely, I think we had a bad connection which wasn't helping so right now it's just simply getting a nice little slow charge 
Uh, I'm going to connect as soon as his computer decides to kind of cooperate here, which is fine. I'm not in a rush. Uh, I'm going to do my compression test one more time so I can just kind of verify the numbers and make sure everything looks good. Everything sounded really good. Sounded a hundred times better than when the truck first came in. Uh, that I like, that I'm happy with. So right now, again, it's going to go ahead and connect. Your bottom left will indicate everything you need to see. Yellow, 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 which means it's trying to connect. And then it'll switch over to green um, and we'll go from there. So just let it do its thing. It's going to connect. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, one thing I do like about the Detroit program, it is pretty quick. So uh, be patient, guys. Be patient. So here we go. We're going to go actions tab. We're going to go to compression test one more time. Now, it does tell you you can only do this test once per key cycle. So keep that in mind, guys. This is not something you can just do one after the other after the other. Cycle the key. Let it cool off. Sometimes the starter gets pretty hot. So, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't force it, man. Just let it do its thing. And again, I don't know why it's taking so long to connect, but... You know, it is what it is. Interesting. Okay, so I got to check engine light up there, but let me get out of this thing. Maybe I can see something that's not popping up. Um, let's find out. CPC, we got five codes on there. That could be giving us the CPC issue. Hmm, could be a bad CPC, I don't know. There we go. So yeah, we got some uh, communication issues, but that is on the CPC side. So. I ain't sweating it too much. Um, my main concern in the main of video is this thing here. So let's go to our actions tab. We're gonna go to relative compression test. Click on yes, click on run test. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Click on run test, click on yes again. And here we go, guys. So I'm gonna try to set this thing up so you guys can see what is going on. Let's see if I can kind of wedge it here. Not really the best angle, but I'm gonna do it anyway, guys. Let's see what we got. Let's see what's going on. And let's crank this. Here goes. Ah, oh, shit. Here goes, guys, ready? There we go. Hopefully that satisfied what the computer was looking for. Ah, click on OK, and there we go. So there's our compression test. We do have an improvement. Now this one jumped over to 104, and this one jumped over to 90. So they kind of switched. I mean, something's up definitely with this one. But we went from 0 to 2% compression to 70%, and then 78 over here. So, you know, not the best, but certainly you know, an improvement. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm going to let it run a little bit and I'm going to do some other testing on it and go from there, guys. So hope this video helps somebody out. I mean, it's, again, not the best, but at least we don't have a bad injector. Um, being that the truck does have a million miles, obviously that kind of says something about it. Um, you know, it is what it is, but there we go, guys. So not an injector, compression test showed that number four was definitely out of whack. But uh, again, with a million miles, this thing may be looking at getting into a rebuild pretty soon. So guys, if you love the video, hope this helps somebody out. Hope it sheds some light. Have yourself a great weekend. Like, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, please. Appreciate y'all. Okay guys, so I wanted to show this and this wasn't in, in the original video. I should have done that, but either way, the, the idea is still the same. You're gonna connect your software. You're gonna go to service routines, go to cylinder cutout manual. You're gonna get to something like this. You're gonna click on begin testing. And then little by little, you can cut out each injector individually. Never cut out more than three. I usually do two at the most. All you're gonna do is click on off and you're gonna go ahead and wait and listen and feel for the difference. So I'm gonna do number one. Let's see if you can hear the difference. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up. You can do the same thing for number two. Put that on off. Click on on. Number three, off. That's where you want to feel it cut out. And then just repeat the process. When you're done, click on turn all cylinders, turn all cylinders on. I usually just go to end test. And then at that point, file, exit, and you're all done. So hopefully that will help you determine. Hopefully that will help you determine if you in fact have a bad cylinder a misfire uh, or 
an injector that's going out. So again, misfire, cylinder, injector, either way you can figure something out like that. Pretty easy to do. Uh, the other thing you can do again is a compression test, but hopefully this helps you guys out in the future. Again, guys, if you like the video, all I ask is two things. Give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe.